Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Betsy Dadabo, and we will be sharing our experiences with the Pixel 2. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO31. All right, so I think both of us uh, pre-ordered our Pixel 2s like the day that they were announced, right? Yeah, day of. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we were um, so excited about about the uh, the... the made by Google event, and I think it, it took a couple weeks for them to come to us, right? They, yeah, about three, I think. Yeah, I think they they came around the, like, October 19th or 20th, like, that weekend. Um, it was MEA weekend for us. Yes. Yep. Um, which means that we've had these things for probably about two or three weeks now. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Yep, yep. So we've had, uh, we've had some time to get to know them and, um, you know, find any little quirks or you know things that pop up um that you have to get used to so yeah we'll get into all of that but first uh let's talk about some of the basics the pricing and the specs and whatnot um so this phone starts at 650 dollars uh if you want more storage so the base level storage is 64 gigabytes if you want to bump it up to 128 um that costs a hundred dollars more uh, and if you want to get the XL size instead of the regular size, it costs two hundred dollars more, um, which is different from last year's Pixel. Last year it was only a hundred and twenty dollar bump to get the bigger, bigger size. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty similar. Although now that I think about it, I think last year they started at thirty two gigs, and yeah. and then they, and they had like three pri- or three storage tiers, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we only have two storage tiers. Um, which I'm okay with because like 64 gigabytes is plenty for me, and so like not feeling the need to bump up to the next storage tier, you know, is is a good thing for me. Because um, I was already kind of feeling the pinch of like, oh, I'm going from you know the $400 uh, cell phone price range to $650, so I didn't want to didn't want to jump too much over that. Um, and you and I, we both got the the standard size 64 gigabyte just black right right yep yep we have very similar tastes <laughs> as it turns out yeah and we both came from a nexus 5x yep so perspective wise mm-hmm. yep yep um in terms of specs uh we have the snapdragon 835 in this phone four gigs of ram um i love having a phone that has four gigs of ram finally because like I'll open an app that I haven't had open for like a whole day and it'll just, you know, it'll still be there in yeah. RAM. Like it doesn't have to load it from from swap memory or anything like that. Um oof. It's 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 so nice like getting out of that mid-tier range, I think. Yeah, it's noticeably faster than the Nexus 5X. Mhm. Um in terms of uh raw battery storage capacity we have 2700 milliamp hours for the the standard size pixel 2 and uh 3520 milliamp hours for the XL um and both of them have USB 3.1 type C which i think is actually important to note because when you get like a phone that has USB type C you can't be certain like which of like how high up they they support the standard you know like they might just charge over usb type c they might support like usb 2.0 speeds they might support three you know so um the pixels have like the highest speed uh in terms of data transfer rates that uh that are supported on usb type c so that's good that's good um one of the big features that google likes to highlight with this phone of course is the camera so the rear camera is a 12 megapixel sensor, uh, f 1.8 aperture size, um, which is pretty nice. That's uh, I think a better aperture size than my DSLR actually. Um, it can shoot 4K video uh, at I think 30 frames per second, um, or you can bump down the resolution to get like a higher frame rate to do slow motion video type stuff. Um, and it has optical image stabilization, which I believe is a first for for the pixel line uh and probably for i don't think that any of the nexuses had uh optical image stabilization before that yeah yeah um the front uh front camera is eight megapixels f 2.4 aperture size and um doesn't have like ois or anything like that so 
the very first day that I got this phone, uh, I ended up going to a concert and I was like way up in the balcony. Um, and so there were a couple of things that I, that I noticed. Um, one was, uh, I'm super glad that I have a, a camera that actually opens its camera quickly, you know, uh, and is ready to like take a picture or a video like right away. Um, that was one thing that both the Nexus five and the Nexus five X, which were my previous two phones, um, struggled with a lot it was like getting the camera software up and running um and so like yeah at the concert I, I realized that like oh there's a cool moment in the song that's about to come up i should record it and then i thought to myself like ah oh, no the camera's not gonna be ready in time but then i was like oh wait i have a brand new phone <laughs> so i whipped it out anyway um and then the other thing that i noticed was um you know the google's been talking about like the video stabilization that they do um and and you know praising it so much uh and so i tested that out by being up in the balcony and like zooming way in on the people on stage and taking a video and it actually looks pretty good um and you can uh, you can watch that video um if you go to the show notes and and click on the link to that that twitter uh status that i have there um yeah it it looks pretty good um all things all things considered um, I haven't, I mean, I haven't done any, like, really thorough testing with the camera. Um, they talk about, like, the, the portrait mode, of course. Um, a lot of people have been saying that it's a real, that it does a really good job despite not having two cameras on the back, but, um, I haven't actually <laughs> tried it yet because I don't take pictures of people. I don't often either. I nominated myself for the black and white photo challenge just so I would take daily photos. Okay. But one of the rules is not taking pictures of people. So mm. I tested a lot of its nature photography. Okay. And random lines. Nice. Random lines? Like, you know, oh, look, this makes a nice pattern. And it's okay. in black and white. So, of course, it looks artsy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I end up taking um, a lot of really, really short videos because I have the One Second Every Day app. So oh. I just like, yeah, I, when there's something interesting going on, I like whip out my camera and just take a second of video. <laughs> Which if you take a picture and it records the motion, then that is technically a second of video. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, that's one thing that they kind of copied from Apple over there. Um, is, uh, what, what does Apple call them? Like live photos, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Google has these motion photos. Um, I can't really tell like what their criteria is for when it takes a motion photo and when it doesn't, um, because it like, I, you can't control it, no. right? It's, it's automatically like, um, I, I had a few pictures of, like, my parents' dog that I took that it did motion photos for those. Those were pretty good. Um, I also had a picture of just, like, a, stat, a street sign that was sitting there that I took a picture of. And it decided that that was worthy of a motion photo. I don't know why. Yeah, I took two identical pictures of the moon. And one mm -hmm. of them was motion photo. And one of them wasn't. So <laughs> so weird. I don't so know weird. what its criteria is either. Um, it also seems like those motion photos are not... Like, they're not accessible by any other apps, you know? Like, I don't think I could export those as videos and put them into one second every day. Um, I could hunt around in the file system and try and find them and see if I could. But, like, the only place that I've seen those motion photos showing up is when you're looking at the photos in Google Google right. Photos. They don't yeah. show up as Instagram in Instagram either. Right, so. yeah. Um, yeah, like, it's, it's not in the camera roll folder for other apps to be able to access, right? Yeah. Right. Um, speaking of Google Photos, actually, uh, one of the, the perks of owning a Pixel phone is that you, uh, well, they talk about, like, free storage for your, for your photos forever. And, of course, that's really vague. And so I was, you know, not sure what the exact terms and conditions were for this thing. Um, but uh, after, after buying the phone, I looked into it a little bit more. And it is for any photos that you take on the Pixel. Actually, I'm not sure about videos, but for any photos for sure that you take on the Pixel um, within like the first three years of the Pixel's life, so we, uh, until like January of 2021, I think, um, all of those pictures won't count against your storage space on, uh, on Google Photos. I have just discovered that you can indeed save it as a video. Okay, good, good. And, th and so that's in like the overflow menu in Google Photos? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. That's nice. 
Uh, the other camera-related thing that we've got here is Google Lens. Um, so do you remember Google Goggles, Betsy? Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is essentially like a rebranded like Google Goggles concept. I'm sure that it uses a completely different algorithm than what they used to. Um, but basically, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that will look at pictures that you take, and it will try to give you more information about them. Um, so... It does everything from, like, reading QR codes, which I think is, like, probably the most important thing that Google, that Google Lens does. Because up until now, there hasn't been a built-in, like, system-wide QR code reader. Um, all the way to, like, you know, trying to recognize uh, brands, you know, logos, um, like, objects in in um, the photos, like, like well, significant objects, right? It's not going to just, like, take a look at a dog and be like, that's a dog, um, you know, but it might, like, try to recognize a painting of a bunch of dogs that are playing poker, for example. Yes, it does try to recognize dog and their basic... Mm-hmm. Will it tell you, like, the breed of dog? It will try. It, okay. I have taken many photos of my dog, and it never gets it right, but it's a mutt, so that's probably part of it. Right, It's right. not going to gene type my dog yeah my uh my parents dog is a mix uh uh beagle and basset hound and it is called a bagel oh yeah that's a pretty good yeah good I, combination. I love that name it's so funny and i know some people too were thinking this might work for identifying trees and plants and things mm. but i have also verified that it cannot do that yeah that would be sweet because like yeah that's one of the things that that I had to learn as like a Boy Scout is like, this is the names of all these stupid plants that right. you're going to see out there on the hike. Yeah, I took a pretty distinctive picture of a leaf that looks like a circular half circle leaf and it mm -hmm. said it was grass. So, <laughs> <laughs> Nope, that's definitely a ginkgo tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, having, having, having a, a camera or a phone that actually has like a good camera and also is ready to take pictures at a moment's notice uh, I think is going to radically change my approach to to taking pictures um, and actually I, I have reinstalled Snapchat now because uh, I had uninstalled it from my Nexus 5x because I was just getting fed up with like having to wait for the camera to be accessed before Snapchat would allow me to do anything, even if I didn't want to, like, take any pictures. I just wanted to look at other people's stuff, you know? But the way that they built Snapchat, it has to have the camera open at all times. So, yep, yep. Um, the other thing about Snapchat, of course, is that it uh, drains battery life like no other. Um, so let's talk about battery life on the Pixel 2. Um, I literally have not used my external battery that I have in my backpack all the time. Since I bought this phone. Yeah, I don't know if it's because I came from a Nexus 5X, which didn't have the best battery, mm -hmm. but I have not had... Sometimes I would charge my phone before leaving work just because I was afraid it wouldn't necessarily last. Or, right. But I haven't had any problems. I think the doze mode works better on it. On the Pixel? Right, because mm -hmm. it just does not drain half as fast. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I I woke up at, like, like probably 7.10 this morning... And I was working on these show docs for this episode. And then, like, at, like, 10.30 or so, I was like, oh, I'm going to go and take a nap. And then as, like, my my habit is to just, like, plug my phone in because I'm it's right next to my bed, right? And I looked at the phone and it was like, I'm at 98%. And I'm like, oh, well, I didn't need to worry about that at all. Right. Yeah. So. And it charges extremely quickly as Yes. Well. Yes. Um, and it's, and it, it's important to note that it's not just like some proprietary like you know Qualcomm like quick quick charging type thing it's actually like the USB um power delivery standard so that's really good um if you if so if we have any other like if you ever get a laptop that you know charges uh via USB it's probably going to use power delivery cuz that's like kind of the the fastest charging that there is um and so yeah your phone will like our phones will be able to take advantage of that Good stuff. And I'm not sure what changed about this feature, but what drained my phone in the past was I, where I work is basically a no cell phone, <laughs> so I would always be searching for a signal and drain my battery. Right. But for some reason, that doesn't seem to affect this phone. The okay. Same, so. Huh. Yeah. Um, I usually end my day, which is like from, well, for a work day, it's from like, you know, 5.30 in the morning until... 10 o'clock at night, you know, I usually end the day with like 20% charge. 
So I don't even get down to the point where the phone automatically puts itself into low battery mode. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, now, it is important to note that there is no wireless charging on this phone. Um, and that was something that I didn't realize ha- had become, like, the norm on the Android side of things until, until of course, like, Apple announced that they were having quick char- or um, wireless charging on the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, And I was like, oh, yeah, welcome to the Fold. Like, we've had this for years. And then I looked at the actual specs of all of the phones over the years, and I was like, oh, they... They stopped, like, most Android manufacturers stopped including wireless charging, like, three years ago because nobody was using it. Um, It doesn't really bother me. I had one phone that had wireless charging, and, mm -hmm. I I mean, it never was that useful because I always wanted to be using my phone when it was plugged in. Mm. So, yeah, it just didn't really help me all that much. And, of course, I was one of those people who never, ever bought a wireless charger. So, like, I was part of the, the reason that, like manufacturers were just like, eh, it's not a big deal. Um, Samsung, of course, has continued to do wireless charging on all of their phones for for throughout the whole thing. Um, but I just I think it's really funny that one of my housemates who now has the iPhone eight, um, she got really excited about it and bought a wireless charging pad. Um, and and she was like, yeah, like now we don't have to worry about like you know some people like have to like unplug the the lightning cables to plug in their USB type C cables, you know, and stuff. And and I just looked at her and I was like, the only two phones in this house that can actually use that pad are yours and the Nexus Five that my brother has, which is like four years old, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic, yeah. I think. Um, as for the displays, um, the regular sized. Pixel 2 has a 5-inch 1080p AMOLED display, uh, and the XL has a 6-inch 1440p uh, POLED display. I've never heard of a POLED display before, Um, but uh, I'm super-duper excited to have an an OLED display for the very first time in my life, um, because... I have always been somebody who uses, like, the dark theme in an app whenever possible, Mm -hmm. um, and having like a display that actually doesn't light up when it ha- when the background is like a true black is it's it like sucks me into the content so much more than an LCD does um and it's also nice that like now it's actually kind of feasible for me to use my like phone as as like the nightstand kind of like you know the clock that's that's right next to my bed um because with my old uh Nexus 5X it, you know the the backlight would like burn out your eyes in a dark room even when it was displaying black um so yeah i think it uses it pretty well um when it's just kind of dozing or it's black Mm -hmm. it also like the yeah the always on display yep it'll show whatever music is playing which is actually kind of cool because it makes my car seem smarter Mm -hmm. because i will just have it propped you know up on my little dashboard mount and then if the radio is playing it'll just say across the bottom what song it is mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i actually kind of like that feature yeah um have you have you had good mileage with it like does it pretty consistently figure things out yeah it does okay yeah i had like the first few probably like the first week that i had the phone it was not doing a very good job of figuring out what i was listening to um but then like since then um i've had it just sitting there while i've been listening to music and and it does like a really really good job of well, yeah, identifying the stuff that I listen to that isn't, like, super-duper, like, um, unknown. That yeah. was going to be my question. Yeah. That is, Are you sure it's not because your tastes are obscure? Oh, yeah, I have. Well, I mean, like, I listen to, like, the soundtracks of video games. So it's like, <laughs> whatever. It, yeah. <laughs> with previous phones that I've had that have some sort of always-on display, I've had troubles with, like, the phones doing stuff in my pocket, right? Mm, yeah. Um. I haven't had that trouble with, with the Pixel 2 so far. How about you? Not really. Sometimes the Google Assistant will come on when I don't want it to. Mm, I but think that might have probably the, the squeezy, the, squeezy the, the, the yeah, active edge. Um, yeah, no, I, so, so this is like the first time that I've had a phone that actually can utilize the always on display like properly, you know, and, and only have a few pixels lit up. Um, but also this is like the first time that... I've had a phone that doesn't just like randomly do stuff in my pocket when I when I leave that feature on. So that's nice. That's super nice. Um the body of the phone um 
I, f- I felt really bad when I got it because I knew that I was going to be putting a case on it. Mm-hmm. But like for that first week, I was walking around with it and I was just like, this this phone feels so nice and it looks so nice and I don't want to put a case on it. Um, but, you know, otherwise I would definitely break it. Yeah, I went through two Nexus 5Xs. By, by physically breaking them? By breaking them. Oh, so wow. I had a case instantly for the phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had actually good planning, right? You like ordered your case yeah. beforehand. Yeah, I I didn't realize how early the phone was going to be getting to me, so I hadn't even ordered a case by the time it got there. Um, yeah, the um, so the the kind of signature look of the Pixel phones is like having the glass on the upper part of the back of the phone, right? Um, and last year for the for the Pixel One, a lot of people were kind of like put off by just you know how much of the back was glass um it was like the full upper third of of the the phone um this year they've kind of toned it back a little bit so now it's more like the the upper fifth of the phone um is glass and i definitely i like that better um you know i I don't think that the glass needed to go all the way down to where the fingerprint sensor is um but uh but yeah i also really really like the material that they use to cover the metal body um because it just like it. It feels nice and grippy. Um, it uh, like I, I understand that metal phones like feel really premium, but they've always like also just felt really cold and slippery to me, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I I like the 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 material that they put on on uh, on the back there. Um, as for the color options, um, the the actual. Like the regular size Pixel and the Pixel XL have actually slightly different color options, which I found rather odd. Um, so for the regular size, we've got just black, clearly white, and kind of blue. Um, and the kind of blue is, you know, kind of like the the special, like you know, exclusive color. Um, and it has uh, like a, a little accent on the on the power button. It's like a kind of a a really light blue, almost like I would say almost neon. Um, but it's like, yeah, um, just gives it that that extra little highlight. Uh, and then the Pixel 2 XL, we have just black again. Um, and then they have a black and white color. So, like, the body of the phone is white, but then, like, the glass area on the upper fifth is, uh, is, is black. Um, and that one has a red power button. And, oh, man, if that color had been available for the regular size Pixel, I definitely would have gotten that yeah. one. I mean, its nickname is Panda Phone, so how can you <laughs> Yeah. Um, I wish that they had done, like, the kind of um, highlighted, like, contrasting color for the power button on on all of the color options. I agree. It looks really cool. Because I think the just black one on the Pixel 2 XL has a different color. Uh, I don't think so. I think we type at the same speed. <laughs> the white, the black and white one has the red power button, and then the uh, for the regular size pixel, the kind of blue has like oh the the turquoise one yeah, and then the white just has a regular white button yeah. Yep. I honestly probably would have bought the kind of blue one if it was available, but it yeah. is almost always sold out. And it th- wasn't even an option when we bought it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. I think it was like exclusively on the Verizon store, like when the pre-orders were going on. Um, but nowadays, you can you can buy the kind of blue through the Google Store. Uh, but good luck getting there while it's in stock. Yeah. Um, that is one thing about this phone is uh, it's it's like the only two carriers that are officially carrying the phone is Verizon and Project Fi. You can totally buy it through the Google Store unlocked and then just pop whatever SIM card in uh, and use it on another carrier. Um, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. They, they're ad- they're advertising it as, as not that. I can't quite figure out what Google's strategy is with making it exclusive to Verizon because... Yeah, I don't know. It's preventing it from wider adoption, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. As- especially since, like, so many people... Uh, do what I hate, which is like just buying their phones directly through their their carriers, uh, and then you know they can never like move their phone off of their carrier or anything. And right. yeah, um, and so like because like if if that phone isn't being advertised on their carrier's website, they're never ever going to consider buying it, which is unfortunate. But you know that's the reality of the world. So yeah. 
Um, one reason that I am a little glad that I put a case on it is that the um, antenna bands, because this is, of course, a metal-bodied phone, um, it does have to have, like, you know, like, straight bands on the back that to allow the antenna to work. Um, the antenna bands are covered up by that material that I mentioned earlier, the, the kind of soft, soft plastic feeling. Um, but it's not covered up right at the edge where the back where like the body meets the glass of the front of the phone um and so there's a couple of places on the front of the phone where you can see the antenna like j- like just barely there in the corner um and it like you don't usually see it but like it it did distract me once or twice when i just like caught it out of the corner of my eye and i was like what's that oh oh yeah um Coming from the Nexus 5X, this uh, this phone feels very, very familiar. You know, like the the screen size is exactly the same. The bezel sizes are almost exactly the same. Um, when I like opened up the uh, the the box and like flipped it over, I literally was like, I, "Did they ship me a Nexus 5X?" <laughs> um, but the like the speaker grills are just a little bit thinner on this one, um, and. Uh, and they're actually both real speakers. Right. So that's it's nice. dual speakers. Yes. Um, so let's talk about those bezels a little <laughs> bit because, uh, yeah, everybody's hating on those bezels. I never really understood that sentiment because it doesn't really bother me. And it bothers me more when I look at photos of the iPhone X and you see the notch at the top. Mm, mm-hmm. That is more annoying to me than the bezel. And it entertains me that people made special custom wallpapers just to hide the notch what oh wow yeah, just that's with funny the black bar across the top that's so funny it kind of disappears so to <laughs> me that is more egregious than having bezels on the top yeah i mean i i feel like once once i do have a phone that has like an edge-to-edge display i'll be like yep there's no going back now yeah. um but like coming from coming from the nexus 5x i don't I don't miss the fact that I don't have an edge to edge display. Um, I'm much more concerned with like what my phone can do than what my phone looks like. Right. So, um, you know, call us living in the past, yeah. but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's fine. It's, I, I'm totally fine with it. Um, my, my, my chief concern with this phone is like whether or not it's going to last me for at least three years. Uh, because I'm I'm so tired of uh, you know just having to buy a new phone every two years because my phone like slows down or it has like prob you know physical yeah. problems with it or whatever. So um, I'm really really hoping that like buying the the proper flagship at a proper flagship price point you know will kind of ensure that uh, that I can keep this phone for a long time and not have to spend money again. Yeah. Aside from the fact that I my last phones came with. Uh, across unfortunate demises Mm -hmm. my other phones i feel like only last about 18 months Mm -hmm. and the nexus 5x in particular had you know the boot loop problem um i never experienced but you're lucky i experienced it twice yeah um and that's actually one of the reasons that um i was super happy to find out you know we found out that like okay htc and lg are going to be you know manufacturing the two pixel twos um, and then when I found out that HTC was the one who's manufacturing the smaller size, I was like, yes, I get to not have an LG phone this year. Um, cause I've been just kind of getting, getting kind of annoyed with, um, the, the, the little hardware quirks that come along with, uh, LG phones a lot of times. Yeah. Um, the button placement on, uh, on this phone, the physical buttons, um, we have a power button and the volume buttons on the right hand side of the phone. Um, my personal preference is to have the volume button on the right and then, or the volume buttons on the left and then the power button on the right. Um, mostly because like, if you want to take a screenshot, it's easier to like, you know, kind of squeeze the two buttons that are on opposite sides of the phone. Um, but, uh... You know, I've I've spent the last two years getting used to having volume buttons on the same side as the the power button, so it's not a deal breaker. I can't say any of it really bothers me because I'll get used to it. It only mm-hmm. annoys me if they're in the way and I accidentally press them, which I haven't had a problem with this phone yet. Right, right, and especially once you put like a, a case on it, you know, it's very easy to kind of distinguish where the power button and the volume buttons are. So like, I can even just like change volume uh, while the po- while it's in my pocket, you know. Um. The fingerprint sensor on the back, um, it's in like the same placement as you know the the Nexus 5X, the Pixel One. Um, I found that this 
fingerprint sensor is really picky. A lot pickier than like the Nexus 5X, especially like especially if my fingers get just a little bit damp, you know, it'll like it'll have trouble recognizing my fingerprint. Um, so I always have to like make sure that my like fingertip is like powder dry before I try and put it on the phone. I haven't noticed that yet, but yeah. maybe you're sweatier. It, I probably am. Yes. Well, that's a good point actually. Over the last three weeks, I've been uh, pretty sick, and so yeah, I've been like sweating through the bed sheets every single night, and you know that's more information than any of you needed, but uh, you know that that could be part of it. Um, yeah. Um, the the lovely feature uh, where you can like swipe on the fingerprint sensor to get like the notifications to come down um, has been improved since uh, since the Nexus Five X. Um, Wait, what? So. <laughs> when on the on the Nexus 5X, you know, when you had uh an app like that allows you to flip it. Okay. So, so when you're holding like the the phone right side up, um portrait mode, uh it you know, it was normal. You just like you swipe down on the phone, right? right? On the on the fingerprint sensor to bring the notifications down. If you flip this phone sideways and have it in landscape mode on the Nexus 5X, you still had to swipe in the same direction relative to the phone's body, right? So you would f- swipe in what is now towards the right. But on the Pixel 2, they rotate the orientation of the direction that you have to swipe. To... I can't get that to work at all. Really? Oh, wait, no. I didn't even realize that was a feature, to be honest. Oh, really? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been around... So, so... It's not something you turn on, I'm just supposed to be looking oh, at Oh, it, it might be. It might be in the gestures section of, uh, of the settings. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it was a very interesting feature that uh like didn't exist on the nexus 5x for the first year right and then the pixel came out and they brought and and they introduced that feature and i was like oh man that is the coolest thing i wish that the nexus 5 had that and then in a software update later on they activated it on the nexus 5x and i was so happy um so yeah i've been i've been using that uh and there's no going back um Speaking of that feature, actually, um, that is another reason that I'm glad that I put a case on this phone because I kept accidentally activating, like I kept accidentally swiping down on the uh, fingerprint sensor when I didn't mean to, when I didn't have a case on it. Um, but now the case kind of gives me, you know, that little, it, it gives me like, like I have to actively put my finger into the little indentation where the uh, fingerprint sensor is in order to, in order to activate that, um, that gesture um so we we mentioned uh active edge earlier um that's the feature where you can squeeze the sides of the phone in order to bring up the uh, google assistant um how do you feel about this feature i feel like it's made me use the assistant more i didn't really in the past yeah i totally agree and yeah. it's i like the ability to adjust the sensitivity of it mm-hmm. because i have a thicker case because of my dropping of said earlier phone yeah and it just, I turned the sensitivity up and it's just about right. Yeah. I started, when I first got it, I like started with the sensitivity all the way down. And I was like, I'm just going to see how often I accidentally activate that. And of course it was way too light, right? So like I was, I was like, whenever I was pulling it out of my pocket, you know, I was accidentally activating the Google Assistant. So I, you know, progressively like bumped it up um, how, how much I have to squeeze it before it uh, activates. And I think I found, I think I found the right place for me. Um, I do wish that we could remap that to do something else um, because, you know, everybody gave Samsung crap about the Bixby button on the, uh, the S8. Um, so if, we, if we're not going to let Samsung get, you know, like get off the hook for that, I don't think that we should let Google get off the hook for having an input, like, you know, method that, that you can't change to something else. Um, yeah, because I th- honestly think I would switch it to activate the camera mm, mm-hmm. if I could. Yeah, but. although, yeah, um, to be fair, like, we already do have a shortcut for opening up the camera, just double-tapping the uh, power button, so. Oh, look, oh, I just noticed in the camera app, you totally can uh, manually tell it do motion or don't do motion, um, and currently I have it on set to motion um, auto. Yeah, all right, hmm, interesting. Um, let's talk about, uh, the sound on this phone. So it's got one really big plus for it and one really big minus. Um, the plus being that it has dual front facing speakers. Um, 
the one of the things about the Nexus 5X that kind of bugged me was the fact that it looked like it had dual front facing speakers but the top speaker was not actually a speaker um now we have proper dual front facing speakers which is like super super rad i love it um being able to just like yeah watch watch videos like and just hand the phone to my mom or whatever without having to be like okay let's like turn on closed captioning because you're not gonna be able to hear it or you know whatever um is really really nice um I also kind of like that it like it matches my Nvidia Shield tablet, which has like the dual front facing speakers on it. So it's uh, you know just a little bit of like consistency between my devices. Um, and then the really big minus, of course, is that there's no headphone jack on this device. I hate that. Yeah, I honestly do. I don't really care if it's the future. Right now, it's just frustrating because the availability of headphones with USB C is pretty limited. Mm-hmm. And having to depend on Bluetooth tooth headphones is just a non-starter for me because right. I have to remember to charge them every night. Maybe if I had wirelessly charging headphones, ah, oh, yeah, where I didn't have to think about it, that would be that would be nice. Yeah, I um when I, when I first bought the phone, I was like, ah, well, this isn't like I I had already had a whole year and a half to like come to terms with the fact that this was going to be an eventuality for me, um, but. You know, so I was like, it's not going to be terrible. Um, and I I have been, like, avoiding, yeah, going with, like, the Bluetooth headset route. Because, um, like, they're just, they're more expensive than, like, wired ones. Um, and I've been getting, like, really, really good mileage out of, um, you know, this, like, $10 pair of, of earbuds that I buy. And then, you know, they last me for... Um, you know, upwards of a year and then, you know, they kind of break and I have to buy another $10 pair. But, you know, it's like, it's still like $10 doesn't add up that fast, right? Um, and so I was like, yeah, I'll just keep using the wired ones and I'll have the dongle and, uh, and you know, I'll probably have to buy like a second dongle so that, you know, just in case my first one like loses or if I lose it or break it or whatever. I wasn't anticipating it breaking within three weeks of having the phone. Literally yesterday my adapter broke and now i have to wait for shipping because well for one thing the google store is out of stock because everybody's i think has been buying them up um you know for exactly this kind of situation um but also like the local target doesn't doesn't carry USB-C to headphone adapters, which I think is ridiculous because, like, I I know for a fact that they are going that they carry like lightning to headphone adapters. Um, why why not carry the USB-C ones? Like, there's there are a few Android phones that have USB-C but no headphone jack. Um, yeah. Right, and even on Amazon, there's not a whole lot of decent ones out there the reviews yeah. are one and two stars yeah yeah i managed to find uh one that was like th- I, it was like three and a half or, or maybe four stars um so here's hoping that they work yeah i'll find out on monday when they come yeah and it really i don't know my usual use for headphones was often at night i always listen to i'm a librarian i listen to an audiobook before bed mm-hmm. and I can't use my normal headphones and charge my phone at the same time. Right. There's no splitter out there really on the, Amazon. There's, yeah. The Google store has one, but it's $45. Yeah, and I'm not, no. Yeah. So I feel like it's really unfortunate. And the availability of Bluetooth headphones that you would actually want to sleep in is pretty limited because mm. it just either doesn't fit your ear or it's not very comfortable to sleep on. So mm-hmm. yeah. it's just really been frustrating for me at night. And even like, the like the USB C wired headphones that are offered through the Google Store are like a hundred and fifty dollars, and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, this is um, mm. yeah. I'm just it, gonna be honest and say it, it's really annoying. I don't. I think I would still buy it again, but yeah, maybe yeah. I would have waited until they had better solutions out there. Had I realized how annoying it would really be. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. I'm just. Yeah. I'm. I'm taking solace in the fact that at least at least i will be able to use any like peripherals that i get for this phone with the next laptop that i get as well you know um which is not the case for the lightning side of things so yeah (sighs) 
enjoy enjoy watching the train wreck uh everybody as <laughs> as as you know we go through these frustrations um let's talk about radios um have you noticed getting better or worse reception with this phone than your last phone seems about the same like i said i still can't get reception in my space mm-hmm. but Really, no one can, so I don't really feel bad about that. Right. Everyone yeah. comes into the library and they're like, no, I can't get on Facebook. Like, Too bad for you. Yeah. Yeah. You're right in the middle of the building. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Ryan loves doing uh, his uh, the, the death grip test where he just like tries to surround as much surface area of the phone with his hands as possible and see if it still gets a signal. Um, I did that at my house uh, earlier today. Um, and I'm doing it right now here at Ryan's house. I'm getting, still getting good signal. So, um, I think it passes that test. Um, when I was setting up this phone, of course, it, uh, prompted me to, to set it up with an eSIM instead of with a physical SIM card. Did you do that as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I did it without thinking, uh, just, you know, like, oh yeah, hey, new feature. Cool. Really awesome. And, um, now I suddenly realize, like, oh, wait a minute. What if I want to, like, you know, just use a different phone? Like, you know, maybe I break the pixel and I need to, like, you know, use somebody else's phone for, like, a, you know, a couple days until I get a new one or something like that. Like, I, I don't think that there's going to be an easy way for me to do that now because I don't, have, I don't have a SIM card that I can just pop into somebody else's phone. Right, and there's not a whole lot of other phones that use this feature right yeah i haven't really researched that but i yeah well how would you even like transfer an e e like what does that mean how does it i don't have any credentials that i can you know input into another phone to give it my service i don't understand how they work it (laughs) makes me it makes me like really scared now um yeah yeah um but i mean to to be fair like over the last two years of having a Nexus 5X, I don't think I ever took the SIM card out of it. I don't think that I ever tried to, you know, that wasn't a thing that ever came up in my life. I did, as, as established, I broke my phone twice. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's that's true. I did have to, like, take out the SIM and put it into my next Nexus 5X. But, like, if that same kind of thing happens with the Pixel, you know, I'll just be getting another Pixel and I'll just have to tell it, like, activate using the eSIM again. So, yeah. Um, software. So software is, uh, basically the reason that people get like Nexuses and Pixels, right? Um, so let's, uh, talk about that briefly. Well, yeah. Um, it comes with stock Android 8.0 Oreo. Um, and if you want to know more about the new version of Android, uh, the last episode of Second Opinion was me talking for an hour by myself (laughs) about all the new features of Android 8.0. So, um, yeah, definitely go and listen to that. Um, one of the, one of the really awesome features of, of Android eight is, uh, called project trouble where they, um, separated out like the kind of higher end, uh, Android functions from like the lower end, um, hardware, like drivers and stuff like that. Right. So that, um, Google can keep and, and the, uh, you know, um, hardware manufacturers can keep coming out with, uh, updates for Android devices, for longer than like the chip manufacturer actually comes out with drivers right because that's been kind of the 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 reason that all android phones including like nexus's only had like two years of software support right was because qualcomm would just like stop releasing drivers for those chips after two years um and so what's google doing with this awesome new world that they've created where they can uh release updates for their phones uh for as long as they want well, they're giving us a whole three years of software Woo-hoo. support. Yay. Um, still a, a far cry from Apple's, I think, five years that they usually support their iPhones with software updates. Right. Um, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I do I do find it promising, though, that like Project Treble also makes it very, very simple to just like install a ROM on top of, you know, like wipe the version of Android that you have and like install a custom ROM on it. So if I still have this Pixel 2 in three years and I want to get the next version of Android, you know, and continue using this phone for the next, you know, four or five years or whatever, um, I can just easily like put Lineage on it or whatever um, and continue to get updates. So Yeah, and Oreo is not that much different on the Pixel aside from the buttons 
or the icons are round and mm, mm-hmm. the Google search bar is in a different spot. Yes, yeah, for the for the launcher, yeah. Um which are both actually changes that um I haven't seen a lot because I uh I use uh, Action Launcher and I, you know, like actively changed all of the icons that had cir- like the dinner plates behind them because I hate that. Yeah, I really didn't understand that because it changed on my Nexus 5X. All the icons went round and mm-hmm. they're much smaller. Mm-hmm. And it makes slightly more sense because more of the buttons or more of the icons are round, but I don't really understand the logic behind it to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I go into that a little bit in a little bit more depth in the uh the Android 8.0 review. Um of course, Google comes out with their like security patches every month, um, and uh, Pixel devices are you know among the first to actually like push those um, those updates out to their to their devices. Um, so I was expecting that uh, you know this this November update was going to bring um, a a patch for the crack attack, um, and it doesn't actually. Uh, it's so the crack patch is part of the like November sixth. Uh, um, pat like security update, um, for Android open source project, um, but <laughs> Google is not bringing the November sixth security patch to the Pixel two until sometime in December. So that's weird. Um, but it's only a month behind. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, in terms of the freebie this year because Google loves to like, you know, promise little, little free things, uh, for those of us, I, I don't remember if it was just for the pre-orders or if this, or, you know, if you're, if you're or if you can still get like this uh, deal. Um, but, uh, this year, instead of getting a daydream view headset, uh, we get a Google home mini. Have Yay. you, have you gotten your code yet? No, me neither. It said a month. So, Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. It shouldn't. So, okay. So it should be like week. another week or two. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to review that later on once they come and once we've, uh, been able to play around with them a little bit. Do you have, do you have a regular Google home in your house yet? I do not. So this will be my first experience. Okay. Yep. Um, I have a Google home, uh, down in my living room right now and, uh, I'm probably going to put the mini up in my bedroom because I don't have any devices that I can just like cast to when I'm in my bedroom. All right. Maybe that's how I can uh, listen to audiobooks now that I don't have headphones. <laughs> that's actually my plan as well. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, any uh, any other final thoughts about the Google Pixel 2? Uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is going to be like a device that just lasts me a long time. Um, and that was and that's the reason why, you know, I, I went with like the straight from Google pixel, you know, as opposed to like, you know, getting some other, um, you know, like a Samsung or, you know, an LG or whatever. Um, or even the essential phone, uh, (laughs) that, that looked like a really attractive device. Um, despite it's a mediocre camera, you know, but that's the story of our lives. Yeah. I would say it depends on what's important to you. Yeah. You use Bluetooth headphones already and really want a good camera. It's totally worth it. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you depend highly on your headphones and don't really want to switch to Bluetooth or an annoying dongle, then don't. Right. Yeah. I think part of the reason that my dongle probably broke on me so fast is because I bike all the time and I have my phone in my front pocket. So Ah. it kind of like, yeah, it probably bends at extreme angles when I'm out there. So you'll have to buy like a tent pack, really. Yeah. Yeah. Or, Or I'll have to finally get like a phone mount for my handlebars or something like that, you know, and, Mm. uh, and have my phone right there in my, in front of me. That would probably be pretty nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that that'll also encourage me to like actually interact with my phone while I'm biking, which is a bad thing. Uh, so maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a learning process, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for listening to this episode of the Extra Dimension, everybody. Um, I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, and you can find links to other stuff that I make at ianrbuck.com. Betsy, how about you? And I am Betsy, fellow nerd co-worker. <laughs> um, and... Uh, you have been listening to a production of The Nexus. If you would like to get in touch with us about, uh, you know, future episodes, ideas for stuff for us to review, if you want to be a guest on the show, you know, whatever, um, 
feedback about this particular episode, uh, hit us up on Twitter at the Nexus TV uh, or send us an email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. This episode of Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so free, feel free to take any audio from this uh, episode and do whatever you want with it, as long as you link back to our original page. Have a good one.